What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're going to install a battery capacity meter with a shunt. Now this is a combo set right here. You can get both of them about 45 bucks, give or take. And I'll place a link in the description below where you can find these. This right here, battery capacity meter here, it measures voltage, amperage input, amperage output, the capacity of the battery. It does a lot of different things. So when we're riding down the road on the golf cart, we're gonna see exactly how much amperage the controller is pulling with the motor against the batteries. We'll be able to check that out. Uh, we'll be able to check the charge input amperage. We'll see the battery capacity, the voltmeter, all of that in one. So that's what we're gonna be doing on today's video. Let's get started. Now when you get your battery capacity meter in, it's gonna look right here. You can have your instructions. You can have your battery capacity meter. And it's going to have a little bit of cable on it, probably about a foot or so. You're going to have your mounting bracket for the back of the capacity meter. This right here mounts just like any other standard gauge. On the back of the capacity meter, it has a wing nut with some threaded rod, as you can see right there. This is going to be your shunt that's included. And on this shunt here on our application, I believe this is rated for 350 amps and up to 100 volts. And we're gonna also gonna have your cable that goes between your shunt and your battery gauge. In order to mount the battery capacity meter, you're gonna need a few hand tools. The only specialty tool you will need is a two and one eighth of an inch hole saw. I'll include links to both of these in the description below. So last night I went ahead and put the batteries on the smart charger now it's saying full you don't really need to have the batteries fully charged in order to install it but in order to program the capacity meters they need to be fully charged so i went ahead and did that last night kind of as a preparement step for today's video all right guys we need to install the shunt pretty simple let me explain it here on the table real quick whatever is hooked to your main negative now remove it and you're going to hook all of those wires to your p negative whether that's going to be the golf cart, that's going to be a DC to DC converter or a charger. All of that's going to go to this side of the shunt. The only thing that's going to go to this side of the shunt is the battery negative. You don't want anything between this negative and the battery, just this one connection here. So you can use a copper plate to attach those, or like in my case, I'm going to just use another battery cable to attach it. Once you have that done, you need to run a main power from the pack voltage to this top of the screen connector here. There's gonna be two slots. You can connect them to either one, it doesn't matter. Now once you have all the grounds connected to P negative, and you have the battery negative connected to the battery negative of the shunt, you have your power wire ran into this top connector here. Next thing you're gonna do is run the white cable that goes from the shunt to the battery capacity meter. And that's simple, that's it. So on the shunt here, if you order this same shunt that I have listed below, uh, this nut right here is going to take a 17 millimeter socket. Next step is go ahead and remove all the wires from the battery negative. Now all the wires that we disconnected here need to go to the output side of the shunt. Only the input is going to be connected to the negative of the battery pack. As you can see, these two terminals, or actually these three terminals, fit this right here um, bolt fine. This right here terminal on the battery does not fit it. So I'm going to take this right here, we're going to drill it out and try to clean it up a little bit before we attach it to the shunt. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and attach all of our negatives from our battery to the output side of the shunt. I like to put my main uh, big heavy duty cables first and anything I do where those attaching to the batteries or say this right here then I can put the accessories and everything else to the shunt that goes on top the reason everything is hooked on this side of the shunt because the shunt reads everything that's going on with these negative wires here whether it be um, like in this case this is the negative for the relay this right here negative is going to the DC to DC converter this negative is going to the charge port, and this is our main negative going to the controller. This right here, shunt is gonna measure input amperage and output amperage as well. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and run a power wire from the main battery positive 
and hook it up to this little green connector here. Then we need to mount the shunt. I'm thinking of mounting the shunt down low on the frame rail right here. All right, so this is the wire that I'm gonna run to the main pack positive. This is 18 gauge wire, it's very small. And I only stripped a little bit back when I, before I stuck it into the slot and then tightened it up with the screw so you don't need much. This right here wire is gonna go to the main pack positive. I went ahead and drilled some holes, mounted the shunt directly to the frame there. Just two regular screws. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and try to clean all of this monstrosity of wire up. I do not like the way it looks. Well, it's not 100% clean, but it looks a lot better. I went ahead and mounted the shunt as well. Next thing we need to do is run the wire from the shunt up to the front of the golf cart and mount the gauge. So on your capacity meter here, it has a special plug on it. That plug will only plug into one side of the extension cable, so you don't have to worry about mix matching them. So I went ahead and pulled the instrument panel away from the dash here. We need to mount the gauge, but in order to mount the gauge, we need to drill a two and one eighth inch hole for the gauge to fit. One of the reasons I pulled this dash, well, a couple of reasons. Number one, we wanna make sure there's nothing behind that opening where it wouldn't interfere with the gauge itself, and we wanna, don't wanna hit no wires. Really and truly, I think it would look good in that location there. Now, the reason I have it upside down is because I want to make sure we have enough room to not only drill the hole, but nothing interferes with the outside of the gauge. All right, let's test fit the gauge here. Yeah, what do you think? I think that's gonna look pretty good in that one spot right there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this wing nut from the back of it. I'm gonna install the mounting uh, bracket on the very back so we can securely mount it to this panel and we can get it all back, put back into place. All right, putting this little bracket on the back here. Now this wing nut is plastic, so you probably don't want to over tighten it. So that's what it looks like on the back side there. Pretty simple. Next thing we're going to do is connect that harness, Just run back to the shunt. I'm going to drop it behind the dash, pick it up underneath, run the wire, reattach everything, put everything back together. Now that the gauge is in place, the shunt is now mounted. The wires are tied up from what I could do with them. Next, I'm gonna put the seat on and we need to set the gauge so we can have an accurate reading. Now, setting up the battery capacity meter, the batteries need to be fully charged. And as you can see, it says 100.0%. The charger says it's full as well. I've already set this up, but I'm gonna set it up again to show you as well because the angle I had it on, the backlight portion of this meter wasn't picking up on the camera. The very left button shows you your voltage. So right now we are 57.67 volts. You press the middle button one time, and it says A up here, the top right. I'm not sure if you guys can see that or not. That's for your amperage output. So right now, we're at 0 0.075 amps output. We hit it one more time. It's showing us 100 amp hours of capacity. Now, say you had 120 amp hour capacity battery, or 105, or 138, or whatever it was, what you'd wanna do is to hold this center section down for three seconds. Now, there you go. Now you got your left button and your right button. Say you have something like 103 or 104. Then you could also just hit to the right to go up, hit to the left to go down. Now, these Enjoybot batteries are 100 amp hour capacity. 
we're going to hit it again to set. So there it is, it's set at 100 amp hours. Over to the right hand side is your percentage. In order to set the percentage up, after you set your amp hours of the battery, you want to hold down the percentage button. Your percentage button will be saved. Right now it shows we're at 100%. The battery capacity appears full. The A is showing 0 0.07 amps. Hit it one more time. We're at 100 amp hours. And over to the left is your volts. We're at 57.61 volts. Now when the golf cart is charging, there will be an up arrow on the left hand side over here. The up arrow states that there's charge going into the batteries or in through the shunt. When it's discharging or when you're riding, there will be an arrow pointing down. Now let's take this out for a test drive. All right, we're stopped. We're going to hit it and see exactly what kind of amps we're pulling and the speed as well. Now, if you notice, there's a down arrow. That's because the battery is being discharged. Sometimes there'll be an up arrow if the battery is charging. So we're going to hit it again. Let's see what kind of amperage we're pulling off this meter here for the EnjoyBot batteries. cart on what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to plug the golf cart up uh, and start charging even though it's already charged to see if the arrow point up on the left hand side of the gauge comes on so now you can see the battery underneath the battery there's a triangle there triangles pointing up that's because we're actually charging the battery now Right now the charger's just started, so it's going up in amperage. Nine amps, 10 amps. I think it'll make its way up to around 13 amps on this charger here, the smart charger. And this kind of lets us know here where the battery's at as far as being charged. This lets us know the amperage down below. Over here to the right, it shows us a percentage of where the battery's at, and we have a voltmeter there as well. But on today's video, what do you think? It's pretty simple, pretty cheap, 45, 50 bucks, and you get all these extra features now on the golf cart, so it should take the range anxiety away from you. With that being said, guys, I appreciate you watching the video. Like it, subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Uh, share this with a friend or in a group or whatever. Until next time, we'll see y'all later.